you know, one of the things that we are promoting here at Capital City in terms of our engagement in mission is our participation in mission through faith promise giving. We exercise faith in order to participate in what God is doing today. We exercise faith when we pray, when we intercede for missionaries. And at the same time, we exercise faith when we ask God to bless missionaries. But you know, here at CCBC, we have a strong ethos of personal participation. So we'd like to challenge you to exercise faith in asking God a very particular request of your personal participation in the work of the Estebans. As you may know, the Estebans in this ministry, they have left the industry, they have left their jobs. This would be a faith ministry. What they would uh, need there in terms of support would be provided by God's people, and we are partners with them. So my challenge is for us to call upon God, how we could be partners with this work, even for a period of time, you know, personally, as an individual, say for, the, for one year. You may ask God to bless you with extra money that you may use to support our missionaries, particularly the Estebans. And when God has blessed you with that, you may take it to church on Sunday, and we could take, make use of these uh, envelopes here. Yan po ang dahilan, kaya marami po tayo nakalista rin. You may use the, the, the item here, designated offering for, then you put Estebans, and then our, our money counters will be able to see that and, and ensure that those designations will reach them. And that will be the practice that we do here at CCBC in terms of uh, handling uh, these faith promise account. Now, another announcement that I'd like to make uh, this afternoon, right after the worship service, I'd like to call on the COC leaders. We'll have a brief meeting, but we will be serving lunch as well. Well, let's come to the Lord with his word let's prepare our hearts if you have your bibles with you turn with me to acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 or you may turn your cell phones or your ipads to that portion and we are going to read together tumayo po tayo bilang paggalang sa pagbasa ng salita ng Dios. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Now let us go down to, to verse 18. And Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sancria because of a vow he had taken. And now let us go and jump towards verse 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. This is the word of God. May he bless our heart as we meditate on it. Let's pray. Father, speak to us in a special way. Cause us, Lord, to understand these models of faith, Lord. People whom you have used strategically. And this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may all be seated. Throughout the missionaries of journeys of Paul, there have been key people he encountered. Meron po siya mga na-encuentro, mga naging kaibigan niya. And they have worked with him and in such a way that these people contributed significantly to the work of the gospel. These people were used by the Holy Spirit in the uniqueness of their life experience and circumstances. 
their career. And when they surrendered their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and walked in the manner that Jesus did, these people became, using CCBC parlance, people strategically engaged. And this is the series that we've been doing uh, recently as we are taking a look at the book of Acts. The people who became Paul's disciples and eventually fellow workers in the mission field are the people that brought him delight and enjoyment. For example, to the Philippian believers, oops, the Apostle Paul wrote, Philippians 1, 3 to 5, let's all read together. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So you will sense here how the Apostle Paul is delighted to think about his partners. You know why? Because there are people being used by God to propagate the gospel to many other people and to many other places. And two of these people with whom <coughs> Paul fondly remembers is a married couple. And their names are Priscilla and Aquila. Sixteen years after he met the couple, he wrote in the book of Romans. Let us read together. My fellow workers in Christ Jesus, they risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Take note, the couple has been engaged not <coughs> excuse me. Only to fellow Jews, but to Gentiles as well. You know what Gentile means? It means they are non Jews. And it means that this couple is engaged in cross-cultural ministry. But they are not professional missionaries. They are not professional pastors. They are not full-time workers. They are not people like June and Ann that we have commit commissioned. They are not like the veteran Galler Ports uh, serving among people of another tribe. Now that is different from them. But we can say this couple... Lay people as they are, they are engaged in cross-cultural witness. So we can call them as people who are strategically engaged in nation's discipleship. Yang pinamemorize kila June at Ann two and one half years ago na pinamemorize rin sa inyo. These are people. Now, we ask ourselves, <coughs> who are Priscilla and Aquila? Sino ba sila? Now, I'd like us to do a quiz. Okay, ganito po ang gagawin natin sa quiz natin. I will not ask you to take one-fourth sheet of paper. I'll just ask you to get your bulletins. And then, uh, you know, if you know the answer, you're just going to raise it like this. Okay? Okay, who are Priscilla and Aquila? Ayan. How many times is Priscilla's and Aquila's name mentioned in the Bible? If you say it is letter A seven times, you just raise your bulletin like this. Ayan. No one is answering, okay? Letter B, who says it's letter B? Five times. Ganyan din lang bulletin niya. Okay, number of people, five times. Yung iba, minapaypay lang. And then letter C, who says it's 12 times? Sige, taas niyo. Yan, okay. Okay lang manghula, okay lang magkamali. Pero ang answer po dyan ay letter A, it is seven times. Another trivia question. How many times is the name Priscilla mentioned in the Bible? Who says it's letter A? One time only. Many times her name is mentioned alone. Ayan. Okay, letter B. Who says it's zero? He's, she's always mentioned with Aquila. Tasang yung bulletin. Yes. And letter C. Who says it's twice? You know, her name is mentioned alone. Okay. Ano ang hula ng iba? Parang trying to play safe, ano? Ano ang answer dito? You know, zero. Her name is always associated with Aquila. Okay, next quiz. What did they have in common with Paul before they met? Okay, letter A, love for travel. Yun ba? No, okay, the sum, yes. Okay, hiking, letter B. Is that the answer? Okay, letter C, tent-making profession. 
Okay, marami. Very good. Alam na alam ninyo. Ayan. Yan pa yung stock knowledge ng CCBC ngayon. Next question. In what order is their names mentioned? Letter A. Whenever their names are mentioned, Priscilla is all mentioned always. First, in all times. That's letter A. Who's answer is that. Yan? Okay. Now, let's try letter B. Who says it's letter B? Where you are twice where Aquila comes first and five times where Priscilla comes first. Taas ang inyong bulletins if that's your answer. Okay. And letter C. Aquila is mentioned first in all times whenever Paul is men uh, mentions them, their name. Taas ang inyong bulletins. How about the others? Not sure. Okay. Ito po ang answer niyan. Yan. So you, uh, you you know sa mga sa Bible, particularly the Bible writers are very particular in the order of names. Meron po yung ano yan eh, uh, uh, degree of importance, you know. But to the apostle Paul, he would interchange their names. And it says something about their relationship. Now, how long did Paul stay with Priscilla and Aquila? Who says it's 5 months? Raise your bulletins. Okay? Sino naman po nang huhula ng 12 months? Letter B. <laughs> okay lang manghula. And who says it's 18 months? Ah, ilan isa lang. Ayan. Well, the answer is 18 months. <laughs> Very good. So now let me add on to your stock knowledge. Ano? Sino ba itong si Priscilla and Aquila? You know what? They are important partners for in, in the gospel. But let me tell you a story of Priscilla and Aquila based on Acts 18 and Romans chapter 16. It all started, the story started in AD 51 when Paul visited Corinth for the first time. Sabi dito sa verse 1 of Acts 18, after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila and he is a native of Pontus. San po yung Pontus na yan? Uh, this is Corinth, this is where Paul went, coming from Athens, and Aquila was a migrant, he was a Jew, but he grew up in this side of Pontus. This is the Black Sea, and this is the north of what is called Turkey today. Ayan. And Aquila, later on in his life, migrated to the premier city of Rome, and this is the capital of the world at that time. You know, I sense that Aquila has this mindset like many other Filipinos today, migrant Filipino. We have this so-called dream and desire to leave our country someday and live in a premier city in the world, di ba? Ang tawag dyan, American dream. Kahit sabihin mo Vancouver pa siya, American dream pa rin ang tawag doon. Marang ganun, <laughs> Vancouver, Canada. Alam niyo kung paano ko nahulaan na si Aquila meron Roman dream you know what the name Aquila means? Ano ang ibig sabihin ng kanyang pangalan? Agila. It means eagle. And eagle is the emblem of the Roman Empire. Kaya hanggang sa pangalan niya, nahandun ang kanyang Roman dream. Siguro parang isang magulang na ipinangalan niya ang kanyang anak, Americanus or something like that. Ano? <laughs> and then your American dream. Harang ganyan eh. Harang Aquila. You know, it reminds me always of my dream to live in Rome. And this guy is married to a woman named Priscilla. By the way, Priscilla is the nickname. The real name is Prisca. Don't ask me, bakit mas mahaba yung nickname kaysa sa little name? Uh, ibang kultura na naman yon. Pero alam niyo kung ano ibig sabihin ng Priscilla or Prisca? It means ancient. It means old. But, so, it, you know, in our culture today, you know, who would want to be named old or ancient? Actually, it denotes classic. You know, you're, 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 you're aged like a wine, you know, you're, you're sophisticated. Ayan. So, kung sino man may pangalan, si Manang Priscilla, buti na lang nasa Munoz ngayon. May by siha, kasama ng mga seniors, and they're attending the anniversary ng church natin doon. So, that is what Priscilla and Aquila are. They are migrants. They are people who wanted to live in the premier city in the world at that time. Kaya lang may nangyari sa kanila. In AD 49, both of them along with many other Jews were kicked out of Rome. Why? What happened? 
Well, according to one journalist at the time, sabi dito, since the Jews, and his name is Suetonius, sabi niya, since the Jews constantly made disturbances at the instigation of Crestus, he expelled them from Rome. So, Claudius Caesar expelled all the Jews from Rome. Why? Nagkaroon ng riot among the Jews. And who instigated the riot? According to this journalist, it's the name of a person named Crestus. I think it is just like one of those riots that the Apostle Paul had encountered when he would visit the cities and teach about Christ. And perhaps Priscilla and Aquila have been victims. Lord. Perhaps, you know, they are not involved with that riot. Lang eh, hindi sila kasama doon, nadamay sila since all, sinabi ng, ng, ng emperor, all the Jews have to leave. Then that includes them. They have to leave Rome. So, how would that, how do you think Aquila would feel? Sad, of course. And it happened that they are business people as well. They are engaged in tent making. They are engaged in trading and manufacturing and trading tents. So, this is what they did in Rome. And perhaps this is all, and surely this is what they did in Corinth as their livelihood. You know, I checked the internet last night. I was trying to find out, you know, what, uh, what is the background, what kind of work or industry this is. Well, they, they make tents made out of goat's hair. It's hard for me to imagine that. Kasi yung mga kambing natin dito, ganyan lang yung ano, eh, buhok. But of course, in places where they are, there's this variety of goats that yung hair nila mukhang may cream silk. Alam mo? Alam <laughs> Makintab and all of those things. But you know what? Another thing that I found out, I thought this is already an ancient and a dead livelihood. No, this is a big industry also in, in the Middle East. Even the sheikhs, the rich people who are, can afford to, to, to uh, construct their own mansions and villas, they still wanted this kind of tent. So you will see ads of many high-end tents and tent makers, uh, skilled tent makers, doing these kinds of tents. So, this is the kind of job that Priscilla and Aquila had. They're engaged in that business. And this is the thing that they had in common with the Apostle Paul. When the Apostle Paul came to Corinth, you know, he was alone. He was not known there. Wala siyang kakilala. And what's the first thing he did? Find a job. And perhaps the one who will give him a job will give him shelter. And that's what he did. That was his strategy. And also that job may connect him with people and he could begin sharing the gospel with them. And that is what happened. He became an employee of Priscilla and Aquila. And what happened? Well, to make the long story short, ano nakikita ninyo rito? You could see three people working together. And not only working together, you could see three people sharing with each other. And you know, what, what kind of sharing must have happened? Perhaps Aquila and Priscilla will be sharing about their disappointment that they were driven out of their dream city. And then here the Apostle Paul will, will share, Christus, Christus, you know what? Back in my old days, I was a Pharisee and I'm one of those instigators of rioting against Christus, actually who is Christ Jesus. And then perhaps you could hear the Apostle Paul sharing with them, you know, this is what happened to me on the way to Damascus. I encountered that Christ. I thought he was a false prophet. I thought he was a false teacher. No, he is the true and living Christ and I encountered him personally. And then he may talk about his salvation, his conversion on Damascus Road. He may have talked about how he was forgiven, how he is the worst of all sinners. He was he may talk about how he's been justified by faith. And he may talk about the difference of relying on the law of Moses to the reliance on the grace of Christ in the work of Christ on the cross. And he talk about all of these things during those times they were together. And perhaps that's the time wherein this couple came to know Jesus in a personal way and came to increase in their understanding of Christ. So, what you see here are not merely people who are just working together or talking with each other. What I see here in that kind of background, you could see a COC 
<laughs> in the experience of CCBC. You know, COC in the workplace, a cell group that is forming and that is happening. And then later on, sabi nga rito sa verse, uh, verse 5 in Acts chapter 18, When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching. In other words, he resigned from his job with Priscilla and Aquila. Hindi na siya naging empleyado. So, Pastor, ano yung connection na nagaling sila sa Macedonia? You will remember that, that Paul in, in first, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 would thank the Macedonians or honor the Macedonians profusely because of their sacrificial giving. So, Silas and Timothy, when they arrived, they had the money to support the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul can now resign from his job and take on preaching and teaching the gospel full time, every day, without the worry that his physical and earthly needs are met. So yun po nangyari. And then later on, as a result, uh, after one year, they decided, or Paul decided to go back to his home church in Antioch. And going back, they have to go through Ephesus. And the thing here is that Ananias and Sapphira decided to join him. So this, the relationship was not severed when Paul resigned as an employee. But they continued on, not in an employee-employer relationship, but in a disciple-maker with the disciples. And they decided as, as well, when Paul began to leave Corinth, they decided to join him. They decided to continue as disciples, and they decided to continue as tent makers as well. So they live in Ephesus, and here in the event in Ephesus, as it is recorded in Acts chapter 18, verse 24, we will see here signs of how Priscilla and Aquila matured in their faith, being disciples of the Apostle Paul. There was this preacher, his name was Apollos. He began preaching in the synagogues and among the Jews. And they were all impressed with his oratorical skill and his thoroughness of use of scripture. And, and Apollos believed also in Jesus Christ. And all of the synagogue members, they were impressed except for Priscilla and Aquila. They sensed that there was some inaccuracies in his teaching. To me, that is a sign of maturity. You know, a person, if, if a person can be able to discern well, if there's inaccuracy, you know, one sign of growth is this. If you're able to discern between good and evil, that is good growth. Alam nyo, sa mundo ngayon, they cannot discern anymore eh, kung ano yung good and evil. Diba? You know, they, what, what, what is evil in the eyes of God, eh, marami sa mundo ngayon, oh, that's okay now. You know, what is wrong in the eyes of God, like, uh, sabi natin, premarital sex or, uh, you know, yung confusion ng yung uh, sexual practices and all of those things. Pagdating sa mundo, parang confusion. But as Christians, when we grow in the Lord, you begin to see, oh, this is not acceptable to God and this is acceptable to God. You grow in discernment what is right and wrong. But as you grow more in the Lord, dito makikita yung, this is what separate. Uh, men from the boys. Those who grow more in the Lord cannot, does not only have the ability to discern what is evil and what is good, what is right and wrong, they have the capability to discern what is the better and the best. To distinguish what is between the better and the best. So, you will see here, uh, Priscilla and Aquila have grown so much in their knowledge of the Word of God that they could sense uh, inadequacies and inaccuracies in the teaching of somebody who is a popular preacher. And then what did they do? Another thing that they did was that they took Apollos aside and began instructing him. What do we see here? We see lay people, business leaders, business people, not professional ministers, instructing the instructor. Wow! And they were effective, definitely, as we could sense from the Word of God. But another mark of their maturity, and I see this talaga, very, very strong sa kanila, they were discreet 
in their correction. Anong ginawa nila? Well, siguro ngayon, parang, uy, hindi, hindi sila nakinig, and then after that, in their minds, naku po, mali-mali naman yan. Hindi naman, they, they, they didn't just listen in their pride, they didn't do anything to demonstrate to the crowd that, hey, mas magaling pa ako sa preacher na yan. No, no. They discreetly invited Apollos for a meal. Parang ganito, limbawa, eh, may inaccuracies, and then they came to the pastor and said, Pastor, alam mo, kain muna tayo doon sa Saisaki. Ayan, parang ganon. <laughs> At gatapos binusog, sabihin, Pastor, mali talaga yung tinuro mo. <laughs> Pero, you know, it, it's in the privacy of that situation. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't make a big fuss about it. They just corrected the teacher privately. And then, of course, as we know, Apollos took it in and he became a better prayer, prayer, uh, preacher as a result. So, we could see that from the time they met the Apostle Paul, after 18 months, they have come to that degree of maturity in life and ministry. And more than that, let us take a look at this statement of the Apostle Paul to them. You know, in AD 54, Emperor Claudius Caesar died. And as a result, to the Jews who were once residents of Rome, that was an opportunity to come back. And they were one of those. Alam nyo na, nandun lagi yung Roman dream. Parang American dream. You know, I am for the city of Rome. So nung namatay si Claudius, ha, they took the opportunity. From Ephesus, they went back to Rome. And then when Paul wrote to the churches in Rome, this is what he said in Romans 16. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul recognized them as their peers in terms of working for the ministry. And he says, they risked their lives for me. You know how the Jews would instigate riots and how Priscilla and Aquila would stand by the Apostle Paul in spite of conflicts, in spite of uh, 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 intrigues. And then, sabi ni Paul, not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. As I have mentioned earlier, Priscilla and Aquila were engaged also in cross-cultural witness. And another thing that I'd like to see here, I'd like us to see here, the Apostle Paul says, greet also the church that meets in their house. You know what it means? These business people... This married couple opens their house for the ministry of the Lord. And who does the ministry? They themselves. What can we say about this couple? Of course, they are a couple committed to each other. They love each other. They are a couple who are uh, perhaps market leaders in the, in the industry of tent making and tent distribution. But at the same time, this is a couple who has matured in their faith. And this is a couple that in their maturity, they're not only mature in terms of the knowledge of the Word of God and instructing others in the Word of God, they're also matured in doing ministry. Sa madaling salita, they know how to run a COC. They know how to put up a house church. They know how to lead others and make disciples of others. That what they know about the Bible, they are able to transfer to them and that they are able to grow. Time is up, but let me make this uh, summary. What can we learn from Priscilla and Aquila as partners in the gospel? Number one, we can learn from them that work and business can be committed for the gospel. You know, you could be as you are and you are still strategically engaged. I mean, as you are in your life, you know, in your career, in your business. You may be a doctor, but you are first and foremost a follower of Christ. You may be an engineer, but you are a Christian engineer as well. God may use whatever profession, whatever career, whatever you are doing today for the propagation of the gospel. Yes, He may use your business, bless your business, in order for you to be able to support many missionaries as Priscilla and Aquila did for the Apostle Paul. But they did more than just using the money to support the missionaries. Using their profits to support the word of mission. They did the business in itself in order to connect with people. 
They opened their house. They practiced hospitality in order to get others and to, to uh, they use their influence in order to see that the gospel would be brought to other people as well. Another thing that I could see here, their marriage is a partnership for the gospel. They've been together not only in running the business, but also in reaching out to others. And then another thing is that their maturity is committed for the gospel of Christ. You know, I've seen many people who desire to know more about scriptures, to know more about God, to grow in their faith. But sadly, to these people, that growth is an end in itself. You know, basta magaling, magaling lang ako. No, no, no. These people knew why they ought to mature in their faith. Because God, they devoted themselves that God may use them for the spread of the gospel. Another thing is that they practice hospitality. When I talk, tell, talk about hospitality, I don't mere, merely mean ngayon sa Quezon City as in opening up your homes all the time and having visitors in your houses all the time. To many of us, that's very impractical. Unang-una, baka yung nangungupahan ka lang ng kwarto o maliit lang yung bahay nyo o magulong-magulo doon sa inyo. But you know what? Hospitality more, means more than just having visitors in your home. Hospitality means making people around you comfortable with you. To the point, you know, when they are there with you, you are, they feel safe with you. And as a result, it is easy to build gospel, to build, build bridges for the gospel. What happens among many of us is that we tend to, to just limit the people who could be comfortable with us. My challenge in terms of hospitality is we open up ourselves and let more people be comfortable with us in such a way that there will be bridges for the gospel. Last Friday, Brother Raymond, our chairman, came to me and said, Pastor George, paalam lang ako. I can only attend the earlier services, but I need to leave and please pray for me. Why do you have to leave? I'm going to Laguna, attend to a funeral. You're not from Laguna, and whose funeral is that? Oh, it's a funeral of my neighbor. You know, they have a kamag-anak who passed away. And why are you going to your neighbor's funeral? Pastor, ipag-pray mo. We live in this neighborhood. We've been praying that God will be able to build bridges with us in such a way that we will be able to bring the gospel to them. I think that is, in a way, being a Priscilla and Aquila in that neighborhood, in that setting. Mga kapatid, my challenge, the challenge that this couple, Priscilla and Aquila, gives to us is this. Continue to grow and mature in the faith. And second, continue to be of use by God in whatever you are, in your marriage, in your career, and whatever you have for the propagation of the gospel. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your word and continue to teach us, O oh God, that we may, we may be instruments of propagating your word by our profession, by our business, and even by our personal lives and our marriage life, O oh God. I pray that you will raise more Priscilla's and Aquila's, people strategically engaged in making disciples of others, and not only among our people, but to the other nations as well. And this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.